Hello and welcome to the most hated show in the black corner of the internet. I'm your host, the whiteologist, Mr. Blows Your Minds, and this is Black Minds News. Black Minds News is to report articulate, translate, communicate, insinuate, develop, investigate, unveil, decode, spread the news, whether it's by news, video, website, or quoting publications. As I articulate this information, I accept the creator of the universe, be here heart, soul, mind, and spirit, because why? The truth don't need no partner. As a descendant of the greatest people who created this place that we call the United States, we, the foundation of black Americans, the bloodline historical lineage, the historical people known as slaves, we who call ourselves B-A-D-O-S, black American descendant of slaves, some say black African descendant of slaves, others say A-D-O-S, American descendant of slaves. We the today children, offspring, and present generation, we give honor to our ancestors. You know what my motto of the show is? I'm never going to tell you what I heard. I'm only going to tell you what I know. Well, today's date is August 30th, 2019. We're going to go over to Oklahoma. Did you hear? Well, it was, uh, you know, a normal day in the newsroom. Do what we, they normally do on a day-to-day basis, as many of us do, as we are called uh, social journalists. Try to present stories that have some appeal, interest, and break some information. I you know, once in a while, you know, they come with these curveball stories to throw the animals at you. Again, showing animals that's in the zoo. This one happened just to be a gorilla, a baby gorilla, at that. And a lot of people visiting zoos admire and love to see the animals in their inhabitants. Really, not in their natural habitats, but this created artificial inhabitants that you get to observe and get up and close with animals. Due to the historical part that we as BADOS and ADOS have you know, lived through this country, when you talk about that word in particular or this particular animal, it has a real bad connotative, kind of racial, they don't say kind of racial element that has been basically global when you think about it it isn't just local or just this country in itself no matter where you go in every country of every ethnicity they all have something related about this particular animal related to people who look from the continent of what we call Africa so this individual on this particular day made a reference to her co-worker, her anchor, co-anchor. Live on the air, was it a fox pole, was it a slip of the tongue, or did just the truth fall out one's mouth, and now we have to try to repair it. Well, let's look at this again. This is Black Minds News, and we're going to disseminate this from our point of view. Stay tuned as Black Minds News present this for topic. Stay tuned for this broadcast. Hey, 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 how's y'all doing again? This is your host, Mr. Blow Your Minds. Welcome to Black Minds News Report. Today's day it is August 30th, 2019. And first and foremost, I want to say what's good to my fam. 
subscribers new and old welcome again once again mr blow your mind tips his hat off to each and every one thanking you for your participation passerbys if you shouldn't happen to pass by this is the most hated show in the black corner of youtube why you say that, Mr. Blogerman? Well, because we used to could get 275,000. That's what I said. 275,000 views, 50,000, and so forth and so on. Today, in 2019, we can't get really past 40 to 100 views, right? So you have to ask yourself something that is on 365 days, never sleeps, always on, always prostituting, always selling. And somehow, a person who's been in this business for seven years had 2.9 thousand subscribers, primarily come on every single day, and yet can't get past 100 views. You tell me if I am not the most suppressed, the most hated show in the black corner of the internet. That is why I am titled the most hated show in the black corner of YouTube. Welcome, as you, your GPS has somehow got you to come over here, and you've seen the thumbnail, or seen the title, and enticed you to come over here. Welcome to the most hated show. Go down the aisle, see some things that you might like. If you happen to see something that makes you feel some kind of way, remember that the model of the show is the truth. Don't need no partner. Now, let's get into today's topic. Again... I'll go ahead and take you over here. First, let me give you this article here on this, right? And uh, again, can people say things and slip up? Yes, yeah, of course they can. Of course you can do that, right? That's just, uh, you know, human nature, man. You know, and then understanding the environment that we all are in. So I guess you could say that uh, it's more prevalent than none. So let me go ahead and let me read you this right quick. And then we should come back after that. Stay tuned. Ready to do this? Ready? I right, hit it. Let's get it. A black TV host co-anchor compared him to a gorilla. He responded with compassion. You know I'm going to say that again. A black TV host co-anchor compared him to a gorilla. He responded with compassion. This story is coming out of the Washington Post, August the 27th, 2019, and this is how it reads. The news story that started with a segment about a curious ape at the Oklahoma City Zoo. Jason Hackett and Alex Housden, co-anchor for the morning news show at KOCO5 TV, called up a video of Finn, the zoo's baby western lowland gorilla. Finn's caretaker had taken over the zoo's Instagram for a day, capturing the footage of the ape recording selfie videos. As you can see, Finn was fascinated, said Housden, who is white. Definitely ready for his close-up there, added Hackett, who is black. As the broadcast broadcasters cut to the traffic report, Housden made a final comment. Kind of looks like you when you take a picture, she said. Hackett paused. Yeah, it does. Actually, yeah, he said. Very close to the camera. What followed was outrage from viewers who called into the station and wrote on Facebook that housing comments was racist and amplified an ugly stereotype about black people. The slur comparing black people and those from Africa to monkeys, gorillas, or apes is entrenched in world history. It has been used by politicians to insult former First Lady Michelle Obama, by U.S. presidents to criticize U.N. delegates and the founders of modern political thought to terms with people, black skin, as subhuman. 
The day after their dialogue about Finn the Gorilla, Hackett and Housen engaged in a much more somber on-air conversation about racism, word choice, cultural education in America that is growing more diverse every day. Almost immediately, Housden began to cry. I'm here this morning because I want to apologize not only to my co-anchor Jason, but to our entire community, she said, touching her anchor's arm. I said something yesterday that was inconsiderate, that was inappropriate, and I hurt people. And I want you to understand how much I hurt you out there. Housen continued turning her eyes from the camera to her colleague. And how much I hurt you. Hackett said beside Housen on the couch as she spoke. I love you so much. You have been one of my best friends for the past year and a half and I would never do anything on purpose to help you, she said. And I love our community and I want you all to know from the bottom of my heart, I apologize for what I said. I know I was wrong and I am sorry. Next, it was Hackett's turn to speak. Alex, thank you very much. He said, tapping her knee as he addressed her. I do accept your apology, and I do accept your apology, and I do appreciate your apology. Hagger turned to the camera. I want to let everybody out there know that uh, Alex is one of my best friends. He said, explaining that uh, they often talk outside of work and share personal matters about their lives. Hackett said that he appreciate her. I do love you, he said. All that being said, and Alex would be the first to say this to you, what she said yesterday was wrong. It cut deep for me, and it cut deep for a lot of you in the community. Hackett said he had heard of your phone calls and saw their angry Facebook messages. He explained to their viewers that just as a doctor uses a scalpel or a plumber uses a wrench, broadcasts use words as tools of their trade. Coming out of this, I want to, I want this to be a teachable moment, he said. The lesson here is that words matter. Because of changing demographics nationwide, a shift that is making the United States more racially and culturally diverse. Hackett emphasized the importance of ownership and education. He said ignorance is no excuse. We have to understand the stereotypes, Hackett said. We have to understand each other's background and the words that hurt, the words that cut deep. We have to find a way to replace those words with love and words of affirmation as well. That education, he said, should be used not to hurt and not to divide, but to build a more perfect union. Haggis said that process is going to be a journey for him and his colleague. We're learning things here, he said, as we at KOCO5 hope that you join us. Hackett and Housen did not immediately respond to a request for comment. KOCO5 President and General Manager Brent Hensley said in an email Tuesday that Alex's apology and Jason's acceptance of the apology and comments on the broader are sufficient comment. Asked if Housen was disciplined for her on-air comment. Hensley said, personnel matters are private. Who just posted. Okay, you have to see this. This is Finn. We're about to show. Oh my goodness. Take a look at him. He is a resident of the Oklahoma City Zoo. And this week, the zoo's eighth caretaker took over their Instagram. And we are all loving that they did. And as you can see, Finn was fascinated. Definitely ready for his close up. Right? Kind of looks like you. We're just going to take a picture. Kind of does, actually. Yeah. Oh. 
A lot of people are calling for her to be fired. I mean, yeah. I've been following this story. And here's the thing. I'm going to say this out loud real quick. So we do like a lot of animal stories here on the news and whatnot. And sometimes, you know, you'll see, I don't know, uh, maybe a sloth or maybe you'll see a snake and you say something to your coworker, as slimy as you, you know. So I feel like when she was saying it, she said it like, yeah, it kind of looks like you, she, you know. But, but the animal itself, obviously, it has a deep-rooted negative connotation here in America. And she said it, and I'm sure she wishes she could have taken that back. Mm -hmm. But she spoke too soon. She spoke too soon. Mm -hmm. I feel like if there were a racist handbook, God, things right. to say and not to say, that would be on page one. Yeah, like right under the N-word. Don't refer to your black friend, black co-anchor, whatever, as a gorilla. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like... That, Monkey, you know, I'm, I'm just tired. Like, really? Like, yeah. you know, this this was not obvious. I think she was reaching for something to say. Obviously, it was yep. coming to an end. It was going into a break or whatever and something cute to say. Like, oh, it kind of looks like you, yeah. you know. So, And I'm sure he, as he stated, probably didn't feel like there was any ill will. But she has to know better. Mm -hmm. She has to know better. Yeah. I mean, that's the bottom line. Yeah, it's, it's like you say. It's page one. I mean, we do. We all have fun with each other on yeah. the show all the time. Mm -hmm. you, know, you put up a picture of Denzel, and Chesley always says, well, I look um, like Denzel from the bottom lip yeah. down, and all the yeah. fun. True. You know, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, and look, as, as, as the white guy, uh, knowing. The white? As the, I, I, I know, I know, it's hard to believe. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't even attempt to go near that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're right, Sheba, what you just said. Handbook, 101, not, no. You don't need to make that comment. It's yeah. ridiculous. Whether or not she needs to be fired, like lose her career, I don't know about that. Uh, but yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Chime in. We want to hear what you think about this. <laughs> it is six. What happened? It's 611 right now. Uh, one what? thing we need to know weather wise. Well, it's going to be a sunny day. Anger told he looks like the gorilla, right? So you see on there the individual there, the brother that you see on there is Jason Hackett. He works for KOCO, which is in Oklahoma, five. And uh, again, is doing a segment uh, about the zoo and the gorilla. And uh, his co host there, named Alex Housden. Uh, said something that has uh, rippled in a lot of people's, you know, spirit, right? Because we are now today in 2019, and you would be under the assumption that uh, some things change, where some things just stay the same. And, uh, you know, <laughs> individual might be listening, but somebody called me a racist the other day on a comment if anybody has seen that, right? Uh, I am racist because I am revealing what you do. Makes me a racist because I comment on what you do. Not that you're not doing anything or I'm just making it up. I am a racist because I am exposing it. See, that just goes to show you that people who cannot internalize and become responsible, maybe not you per se, but just look at your people. Because when you talk about history, and I say that we 
are the greatest people who create this land and you don't understand that, you got a long way to go, young man. And again, I offer you to come on here and have that conversation. Anyway. So, same thing here. Alex Housden would like people to assume she is naive and ignorant to the fact that saying a comparison to a person of color, black man in particular, making reference that you look like a gorilla, a monkey. Again, you can go all over this bubble, which we call the world, and especially like if you, let's say, for instance, when you go into Europe, when they play soccer and a lot of those black soccer players are out there, do you not see there's the they have the the sound, the gorilla sound, right? They'll make the gorilla sound, they'll throw bananas on the field. Hmm? And so people like to make this as a isolated incident. Again, yes, a person could slip, made a a reference that maybe could have been kind of borderline-ish, right? And we're not to be so sensitive about everything, but it's not like you didn't say what you said and knowingly, it, maybe you felt like you could get away with it. Again, no one can ever read the intentions of an individual but behind the skin and the bone. In the spirit, right? It's kind of the same thing when we see policemen and the things that happen again. To say that one is fearful of life, only that individual truly know whether that's true or not. And again, the creators, we, those who believe in the creator, right? And so, was it a, let me see if I can slip this through? Because again, you already kind of knew this was coming up. And as the one, as you've seen the round table of those who were talking about after what had took place, they were kind of like, well, you know, they don't see how you really could try to, you know, make that appable. How, how did you make that? How are you going to make that platable for people to taste? And knowing that that's right, when she said a racist handbook, that should be number one. Never call your black friends. Gorilla, monkey, anything in reference to that, that should be number one in the in your racist book. There's a lot of number ones that could be there, right? And so it's just ironic that, again, let's just say we're going to do the count of 16, 19 to, to, to today. It's 400 years, and people still act as if, like, again, they don't understand racism in this country. Just like the individual who are telling me about I should learn my history. No, I know my history. I think you don't understand that you the one who's been isolated and somebody is feeding you to make you emboldened in such a way that if you understood, if you hear the truth, you're going to be offended by it. You get what I'm saying? You're going to be offended to hear the truth because the truth you've been told has been fixed to make you feel and be a certain way. But if we told it in its entirety, in its truth, you may not like what you hear. So, these references that have been made when it comes to monkey, gorilla, and so forth, we even see that, again, as a lot of people say, the highest office in the land being the president. I've never heard anybody make a reference to any white person who sat in the seat of the White House, man or first lady, and referenced them as into gorilla, made memes, angry gorilla, right? So that seems to be, that is primarily particularized to a specific people as black folks. And so, for Alex Housen to act innocently as if it was a slip of the tongue means that you speak before you think. And a lot that we do, it's not, no, no one can say they don't do it and it has not. And that's not the point. The point is, you who do news, 
cannot sit there and say that you don't know. And I can show you that you can say you can't say you don't know. We even had presidents again holding that highest office prior to even the one that we have sitting now. I just did the couple shows back about remember between the exchange between Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan that has come out in the archive. And they said there's probably so much, but again, it took them over 20 years to finally put it out because they had to sift through everything to find out what category before they can start putting out because there's some things in there that would be very detrimental to the, you know, legacy if there could be such a thing as if, again, we as BADOS and ADOS in this land, we understand uh, when we hear people say they're not, again, I mean, that's for your own. You you the one have to stand for your own. Again, according to being in the shoes that we wear and we walk in, how does one, when we say things, try to tell us what we don't know when we the ones been carrying the burden the whole time? Racism is a word for others, but it's also a lifestyle for another people. Let me say that again. For some people, it's just a word. You try not to be a racist and try not to be a bigot. That's fine. But what about that again, which exposes its hate and oppression on other people? It's not just a word to them. It is something that they actually have to live. And so when you say these things unconsciously, and you had the audience that was live that affected them. And this is why it ended up becoming, you know, social media. Because people who watched were offended by what was said. And they got on Facebook and so forth. And now again, it's on YouTube. And now we're disseminating from our perspective. Well, a lot of them are not going to like what we're going to say. And so we see that according to the way that the article came out, it says it was more about how the brother, Jason Hackett, took the compassion role, right? He was compassionate. Haven't we know through history, black people have always had to take the higher road. Yet other people who, again, want to argue with me as to what about history and about who great and who built Okay, in the position one has been in, but yet seem, can't seem to change something that seems to be so obvious that if you want to talk about your forefathers and the establishment of what they set up, set up, we didn't say build, set up, that they were wrong. And the thing is, we know you're never going to admit you're wrong. Anybody who's looking for that, if you're holding your breath for that, you'll be dead. Never going to admit that. They will give you the politically correct about changing policies and they'll use type of words and they'll say this. But as to you seeing that, just that, don't hold your breath. Because you may find one, but then again, how many is there? If there was a do a head count. It's like how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? The world may never know, right? So we see that Michelle Obama was called that. Mm. And Nixon and Reagan had the conversation talking about all oh, those, you know, still down the used to wearing shoes and right. And so she said something about being best friends. Best friends hurt each other. Sometimes, you know, as a best friend, you get in arguments. You don't want nobody who's always a yes person around you. So sometimes you don't get into that. And again, even in relationships, whether it be girlfriend, boyfriend, husband and wife, sometimes you get into disagreements and arguments. And sometimes we say things we just don't mean. Sometimes that's just what it is. Again, living in this country that we live in, dog eat dog. Everybody proud. Everybody want to be the grandest and the best. So sometimes when you're losing, you take a, you find something to pull out and use and throw it just because you got to get something back to get because you're losing. And so we say things. And then later on, like, damn, we can't take it back. We said that shit. Ah, fuck. 
Didn't mean that shit. So I'm gonna be sleeping on the damn couch. Ain't gonna be no loving. All right, you gotta try to make it right. So you're trying to figure out ways how to make it right. So again, that's what she did. She came back. She got on there. She's trying to apologize. But again, you tried to add the old crocodiles to it, right? Try to cry. That's no, 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 no. We we beyond that now. That, that's you know the damage of four hundred years of y'all count to now. Tears is not going to penetrate and get and seep into our hearts because we done heard it. You understand? It gets to the point. Let's just say, for instance, I can't say for a certain one hundred percent. I'm just gonna say. Let's say if I could be the creator. And you know they teach you a prayer in the Bible. And let's say you say the prayer all the time. All right? I'll lay me down to sleep and pray, Lord, the soul take it. Die before I wake and pray, Lord, the soul take it. All right? You say that every night, every night, every night. To the fact that I'm the creator, I'm just sitting there like I'm falling asleep. Because I already know what you're going to say. It has no feeling no more. You get what I'm saying? You done said it so much that I know what you're going to say to the fact that, uh, you know, as a parent, grandparent, so forth, you a kid that just know they lying. You know they damn lying. You know, they done used this lie so many damn times. You just like, oh, boy, let me get your ass. That's bullshit, huh? Right? So that's just the way it is when it done came with white folks trying to apologize you did something, and then when you get caught by it, then you wanna, we want to apologize. It's it's you it's it's worn out. It's to the point that it has no value whatsoever, regardless to you crying, you trying to pour your heart out. We are beat down from years of this to the fact that you become numb. But we still, again, it resonates with us because it's real to us. But when it come out of your mouth, we understand the insincerity that it is coming from you. Even though you try to play the role, put the mask on and try to sell it, but we're not buying it. And so you see that, again, the brother has to take the high road to try to help you. As you heard, the white man in the round table was like, he don't believe he should use them. She, she should lose a job. Pretty sure, again, see, on code, going to try to help Dan's on the stretch. She's white. I'm white. He even made it. I am the white guy here. <laughs> right? So, I, right? So, okay, you're the white guy there. And he himself said, I would never touch that. I know. See? So then, uh, is it just the lackadaisical aspect on her part? Or is it just, maybe as I've been saying, those who've been watching the show, remember I say, people say what they say, and then, you know, okay, if I get caught, so I got all, this will be the thing that I'll be known amongst my friends and relatives, I went to the picnics and reunion. Hey, you remember when you said that on live? That was funny. Right? You got away with one, at least you believe you got away with one. At the expense, sometimes some people say it's worth the expense, right? Right? It's worth it. And so that's what you've seen there, right? You've seen that. Again, a person wants to try to tell you that, uh, I'm going to take that brother off there because, uh, you know, just, just the image in itself, right, is appalling in itself, right? That that's what you want to do. So, you know, somebody, they're probably getting their rocks off, right? But he did what we always do. And again, black folks in this country have always been the more. Let me tell you for all these brand new ones out here. You brand new ones out here. Black folks have always been the moral compass of this land. You know why? Because of the condition we've been in. You beat the hell out of us, right? You beat us into submission, right? You had ancestor. You beat them in submission. You made them again to get your prospects and your profits and all that. And yet they were submissive in some aspects that you made it lawful. Don't look me in my eye. Look, turn away. You take the back seat. I get the front seat. Right? So how can a people who are created that way 
not be the moral people because the thing that you gave them to make them submissive and docile and obedient to you is the thing that you don't even take and do for your own damn self. Let me say that again. Hmm? Let me say that again. People who you beat down made them submissive, obedient, fed them this as this is going to be your structure and foundation. They took it and made it a reality where you made things that you can't look me in the eye, don't talk to me direct, and so forth and so on, right? How could they not be the moral foundation of this country because that same stuff that you did to them was not done to you and the curriculum and education and indoctrination you gave them you yourself do not even uphold that for your own so again for those who have been offended because I said the greatest people who created this land what you think I'm talking about then who you think I'm talking about so the moral compass of this land. And so to now do everything again for those who have not the eyes to see the designs and the schemes that have been laid to decimate a people. To take them out of that state and make them so that now you could parade them and promote them and say, look, look how look at them, the detriment of society. But how long have we been that and how, again, how long have we been this other to where we are today? So what took place that took away the moral compass of this land to where you see today that you're trying to posterize that as this is who they are? What took place? What is the hidden lie inside of there? Hmm? So these same people that you degrade and make them as this. You know, beast of burden, as you want to say, right? The beast of burden. That it seems to be something in cahoots around the world. People outside of not being black feel all together. You all feel that same way. What are you talking about, Mr. Blur? Well, let me show you something here, right? Let me show you something, right? Let me show you that. Because I did this report already. Right? Do y'all remember this? Uh, you remember this? Uh, did anybody remember that? So, since you may not remember it, let me go ahead and let me just read it to you because I might have forgot. All right? Check this out. Chinese Museum accused of racism over photos pairing Africans with animals. You know I'm going to say that again. Chinese museum accused of racism over photos pairing Africans with animals. More than 141,000 people visit the exhibit in Wuhan before it is eventually removed after sparking complaints from Africans. A museum in China has removed an exhibit this week that juxtaposed photographs of animals with portraits of black Africans, sparking complaints of racism. The exhibit, titled This is Africa, at the Hubei Provincial Museum in the city of Wuhan, displayed a series of depicts, each one containing a photo of an African person paired with the face of an animal. In a particular striking example, a child with his mouth wide open was paired with a gorilla and other works include baboons and cheetahs. The exhibit was eventually removed after complaints by Africans, including some living in China. The curator said all the photographs were taken by Yu Yuping, a construction magnate who has traveled to Africa more than 20 times has previously won awards for his work and is vice chairman of the Hubei Photographers Association. Racial sensitivities are often muddled in China, where about 92% of the population belongs to the dominant Han ethnicity and ethnic minorities mostly live in the sporadically populated far west of the country. African countries are increasingly important trading partners, but cultural stereotypes dominate Chinese popular discourse on the continent. 
Wang Yu Jun, one that exhibits the curators, said the comparison to animals were typically seen as a compliment in Chinese culture, pointing to the zodiac signs that identify people with animals according to their birth year. The target audience is mainly Chinese, Wang said in the statement, but the museum understood the image offended our African friends, and the pictures were removed to show respect for their concern, Wang added. The offensive nature was first noticed by a Nigerian Instagram user, Edward E. Duke, a post which was later removed. He asked why the museum put pictures of a particular race next to wild animals. More than 141,000 people visit this show, which opened just before China's week-long National Day holiday. China is riff with examples of tone deafness when it comes to race. China's most popular chat app, WeChat, was forced to apologize this week after its software used the English N-word to translate a Chinese phrase that commonly means black foreigner. Last year, a television advert for laundry detergent showed a black man covered in paint going into a washing machine and coming out as sparkling Asian man. The video went viral around the world and caused outrage for its insensitive messaging. Over the summer, China State News Agency published a video during a border standoff with Indian featuring an offensive parody of a Sikh man, complete with a turban and fake beard. So, right. So that was again in China that had what? A museum. Hmm? They created a museum in China. This is Africa. And let me show you because, again, for those who might be new to the show, you didn't see this. But uh, I did this when it originally broke back in 2017. And. Uh, let me show you, right? So let me give you some of the images that are inside the museum. I would have had the uh, video, but may have did something to my channel. So here's the picture there, right? You see, right? Look at that. They're making a comparison, right? The little boy to the monkey to the right of that, right? Say, oh, look at the similarities to it, right? As the article talks about that, they did it as a compliment to the Africans as making the equivalent to uh, your zodiac signs. Oh, yeah, something like, you know, the animals in the zodiac sign, right? Everybody plays dumb as to when they trying to say, well, what is this, right? But if it was what you said is, then why would you take it down, right? If, if that's what you try to say, that's the thing. If it is what you said is, then stick to it. Then, 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 you're doing nothing wrong. But you take it down means... Oh, okay, y'all call this, all right, fine. If it wasn't for a African that had went to the museum and asked and posed the question, well, why you have these animals? And he made it reverent. Animals with we as people, right? So, had another one there, right? Little boy with his mouth open, gorilla with his mouth open, making it from reference to, again, right? The racialness. Not just here in the United States. It's all over this place, man. 
Everybody who is not of our skin has some kind of ill will feeling. Now, those who work on trying to shave that off, uh, I guess that's the work you have to do. But this here is an old business. Matter of fact, do you even know, again, to some of my readings over the years, I learned that uh, how that whole thing about gorillas came into the ideology and became a stereotype is because when white folks was first coming to the continent who ain't never seen a gorilla hmm? one of the so called maybe he was an explorer or was a trader or maybe a merchant and the first time he ever seen a gorilla based on him seeing the gorilla and never knowing what a gorilla was his assumption was that that gorilla that he see, that they must have birthed that gorilla. And he took that back with him up into Europe. And then when they started to show the you know pictures, though, there was just the stories about it. It was telling these stories because there wasn't no pictures yet, right? Maybe somebody could draw, but you didn't have no camera taking no picture. But so when they was going back and relating these tales, because just imagine, you know, these tales when they go sailing and leave and be gone for months and come back and, you know, they sit around and telling these stories. Again, the same thing as if when people do these so-called racial things and get, get away with it. And then when they get around their people, they get to talk about that same thing with you no know, cops and arrest and so forth and all that other stuff. So he went back and he started telling this story and this became... You know, word of travel, because that was their entertainment, you know, like other than what you already knew in your community. This is this is some traveling news. Did you know that these people have this thing that like animals and gorillas birthing them? And so you stigmatize us with that, right? Now you start stigmatizing us with that. But you know what's funny is the fact that if we take science, right? If we take science. And they say that, you know, in blood, they're talking about RH factor, right? The RH factor. Now, they say that the RH blood is, is it negative. Is it RH negative or RH positive? Well, it's one of the two, right? That That is primarily in European blood, right? The RH. Hmm? Not really in the African, other than the fact that there'd be some mixing and copulation but primarily that's not an African blood trait but in Europe that is a blood trait but do you know what that RH is the RH is rhesus monkey hmm? the rhesus monkey hmm? so somebody got really a monkey in them as much as you make the comparison and say, we look like monkeys, but uh, somebody actually got the monkey blood. Now, a lot of us, due to our encounter and our being uh, prisoners of war, got some monkey blood in us too, right? So, but prior before that, that's not part of our makeup. But we've always been labeled and stigmatized with that. Y'all remember also this story? Remember when this was viral? Um, what was that? What was that one? Um, what was that one? You remember this? I think. Oh, let's see. I think I got it. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Let me show you. Remember this when this went viral, right? You remember this? Anybody remember this? Remember that picture when that brother from the continent took the picture, but the gorillas taking the selfie. Right? Some people say that may not be real. You know what I'm saying? They say, wait, where Hollywood is, and who knows what that is, right? But so much, not so much of them just taking a picture, but they also trying to make the reference that he himself looked like the gorilla. Right? That he looked like the gorilla. Right? So I said everything is negative can find a way to talk about black folks, but is there anything that we can say about white folks that'd be negative that would be true? Oh, we start saying that, then we're racist, right? So I guess somebody's going to say, I ain't said racist monkey. You're a racist. Is it scientifically fact? Then tell me that I'm lying. Then prove that I'm lying, right? Now again, is that fact? I didn't make that up. What the hell would I know anything about a racist monkey blood? 
I had to read that, learn that from somewhere that somewhere that through your experiences and again, you regulating everything. We don't set the proceedings for anything. We are just going along with what you say is and then we may get in involved and then we may go through your experiences to find some results that you need, but we don't really come and discover our own separate from any studies that you do. And so that's just what that is, right? And so, with that being said, that's just how it is, right? You know, we th that's what that is. You, you put that on us. We've been carrying it globally to the fact that even people who we know have the infusion of black blood in them, but to anything to try to purge that up out of them and try to label themselves to be something not that, when they get angry, they'll call you it. Hmm? Just like the article said that uh, there was the word that was used in China that was making reference to a black person, but they actually used the word nigga to make that to be synonymous with the word of the term that they used, knowing that ain't even the word that they was using, but just to say it so that they could say it, to say that's a black person. Hmm? And so, you know, the brother goes on, going back to the story about what the brother Jason Hackett says. That uh, due to, you know, the trade that one is, he says a doctor uses a scalpel, a plumber uses a you know, plunger or, you know, pipe fitter. He said that a an anchor, a news person, use words. So words matter. And so... That's what he was trying to use, right? But again, that was what it was. And then he went on and talked about how to come in different demographic change. And that was causing a lot of the problem. It's the demographic change. Other people have in the mind of what it would be like if they're not the majority, not in power. So it breathes a certain anger. Next thing you know, they're lashing out. They're doing all kind of things because feeling invulnerable for some odd reason. Been in power all the time. If any, there's no boogeyman, because I guess if the boogeyman was out, I think the boogeyman would already got you by now. But there ain't no boogeyman. So that's all, of, you know, something in your mind. Again, mind's playing tricks on me. And so you see the young brother there was still trying to say that, you know, ignorance is no excuse. And that's primarily when you think about it, white folks, I can't say all, some but no, are ignorant about when it comes to racism. They're very ignorant. And a lot of them are very deflective as to say, when you talk about race and because they cannot fandom your understanding from the perspective that you come from, that you're either racist, you're lying, or you're always crying. But again, as my analogy is always, the mannequin in the window. You just the window shopper. I am the mannequin that wears the clothes. So you are imagining what it to be to put the clothes on and what you would look like. I'm the mannequin with it already on, and I can tell you what it is. But I think the problem is, y'all don't want to hear that. So, he says to make a more perfect union. See, black folks is always these people who are trying to make some way to make it better for you. Like, black folks have to change and then have to change for you too. So, when when your part in this? When, when, you, when is your part going to come in there? Never, right? You're going to hold that till the wheels fall off. And other people are just going to have to come to the realization that they can say progress is slow, that change is subtle, but, you know, but acceptance for my wrong, I should take immediately. Means, again, I let you off the hook for something that you just constantly been doing in this all around. It may not just be all of you, but again, we see it so much to the fact we become numb, it's, don't have no feeling anymore. And so, it's going to have to be some retrospection on your part. Because, 
I don't know what's going to happen. Is it the people trying to say she need to be fired? I guess those who people who are really taking that sense and they need to do that, that's from them. Me, pssst. and hey, see, my thing is, they a lot of them don't want to be looked upon as that. If that's the effect that the post you have to take and then make them have to deal with their own people to make them change, then so be it. Right? Then so be it. Why do we got to keep carrying the burden of your nonsense, of your illness, with your sickness? No, we're not going to do it anymore. And everybody should be tired. As this lady in the round table was like, she was tired of this. Yeah. Joe Biden even said it. Remember when I just read the other day when he talked about, put his hand on the <laughs> We just can't do it anymore. Right. Can't do it anymore. It's getting tiresome. Either you change or just stay what it is. And it is going to be what it is. We, we probably much already realize you're going to run until the wheels fall off. But there's a lot of people who are just hoping and wishing you would change. There's a lot of people out here who are actually praying for you to change. So that they could be friends and buddy with you. But you can't. They can't. Regardless of what you think, they can't. It's just something innately that has to run its course. And that was the whole purpose of whatever went against, whatever the creator did in initially. The initial. Just like when we heard the woman from uh, running for the council we're talking about Adam and Eve. Now again, when they say Adam and Eve, they would also make Adam and Eve have to be white folks in the beginning. So that means the only way that black people could have came according to the way that again, that somebody skewed and put in the Bible that they had to be a curse to get black. Right? Think about that. In order for there to be black folks, again, the black people being the most dominant or the, or the most populous people on the planet, then how could Adam and Eve be first? I'll say that again. If Adam and Eve, according to what they said, and then that woman in the council was making a reference that Adam and Eve had to be white, then how do you get black folks from white folks? White folks cannot make people of color. Two white folks can only produce what they are. Everybody else can have that, which again, what they would call inside some kind of what? Mutation might happen, and they call albinism, but they would have something that would be more in reference to likeness of their, of, of them, but they can never produce you. So if you're going to say in the beginning there was and had to be that Adam and Eve had to be people of color, unless this is about something else entirely, right? That Adam and Eve in the Bible is actually, again, putting in the Garden of Eden and putting there and keeping people from getting in there. Maybe this was a science experiment. Maybe it was the first science experiment. As they talk about cloning today, maybe going back in time, some people did some things that uh, took some experiment and put it and made it. Because again, somebody had argued me the day before that, you dumb shit, we're all just evil, we're all just humans. But again, recessive and dominant when it comes to genetical traits. Who has the dominant gene? And who has the recessive gene? So that's from strong to weak, right? Strong to weak. It don't go from weak to strong. Now, again, you can build up and get that, right? But, it, but in actuality, it's the other way. When you're strong, and then you, as you get older and older, you get weaker, right? So it's in reversal from dominant to weak. So that means that the dominant had to been there first. Now, that's not to say anything to Pope Francis. This is just, you know what it is. It ain't like somebody making this up. This is what it is. And so, I'm going to talk about it because, again, this whole thing, Gorilla Monkey stuff, again, I'm pretty sure a lot of people got their laugh and jokes out of it. So, okay, here's, here's a teacher, here's a talk moment. Here's, here's a talk moment for it. Because 
as much as y'all want to say that and say the reason why they do, you know, this twitch, they call this twitch muscle, the reason why you got this kind of an animal thing, read right, Bolt can run the way he is and Jordan can jump as high as he do and right, all that stuff, but nothing to do, they got nothing to do with no no animal when it comes to their brain. You, you just smart, you, you're smarter than everybody, but you don't look at the fact that you retard everybody from again allowing them to be again themselves anyway. So this gorilla that you say, even though when you go back and you look at that whole thing, gorilla, orangutan, chimpanzee. So according to what y'all talking about, going back then from this evolution thing, monkeys running you as well. But we don't see us saying that. You don't see black folks calling white folks monkeys. But y'all tend to see how that, because again, I guess that's the only thing you could do to pick up the rock, the only thing to fight with. Is when you want to come at that, you have to use that as in your repertoire. So, okay. It is what it is, right? So, ain't nothing else need to be said in that, man. I mean, it's, it's obvious. Again, ain't nothing. It's just, you know, it's just obvious. And so, you know, they'll be heard about that family. I know some of y'all are just wishing and hoping and praying. You sound like the, the bill. Oh, I'm just the only a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here. Huh? You know, I was a white man singing that, right? It's been a long, long journey while I sing away. Huh? That's what it is. You're just going to be sitting there. You're going to be waiting if you hoping to think that they going to change. Not going to change, man. Till they prove it to you. They have to look at it for what it is. And the ones that's not... But let that be they burden to do the work against their own damn people. Again, I'm your host, Mr. Blows Your Minds. And this has been another Black Minds News Report. Um, I said about it. I, I, when I need to get into the article, everybody know what that is. Man. What they explain about. It's just, again, it's been going on for so damn long that the fact is just numb and they don't even have no effect. It's kind of like the way of saying nigger. Don't have that no more. Unless you're brand new, you just knew it. Don't have that anymore. Because you don't wore it out. Again, you don't have nothing. You can't create anything. That's why you keep rehashing these same old thing. You can't come up with anything creative to come up with nothing new. So only thing you do is just keep going in circle, dog chasing this tail. So it gets to the point that the dog get tired out, can't take, can't catch his tail, he recognizes, so he just stop. In this case, this one's going to run itself crazy. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank everybody for your participation. Remember when you see one another, what's good, brother? What's good, sister? Can't do that much use of that universal nod. Understand we is all we got. Understand with the uniform and the team that you are on. Yes, LIs are important. Ask yours these few questions. Are you willing to stay in the prime band when shit get hot? If shit get hot. Have you ever heard of John Brown? Is he real to you? Or is that just a mythological story, a fictitious story they told us that they ain't really was real to nobody? Understand that there are some, but not all, that have the seek of your demise, so it is incumbent that we seek uh, uh, to stay vigilant, mindful, cautious, and high spirit. Again, this is Black Minds News. want to say again, this is your host, Mr. Blow Your Minds. want to say peace and love until the next show. Until the next show.